Hello, I'm Mario, and today what I need to do is, well, basically glue two pieces of HDPE uh, together. So what I'm talking about specifically is high-density polyethylene. And specifically today what I'm working with is a product made by King, and it's called Starboard. And it's pretty popular in uh, applications, in marine applications, like for boats. I have these two pieces here and I'm going to laminate them uh, together. And I'm going to use this product as a nailer. Essentially I'm going to attach a shelf uh, to it. And one thing that you want to remember about gluing HDPE or high density polyethylene or any plastic for that matter, using an adhesive is, uh, well, it's you just have to expect it to fail and um, so I've never done it before and I want to give it a shot and I think this is a good application for me because I'm still going to use mechanical fasteners to hold this product uh, together and it'll give me a chance to you know in a year or later on down the road I can kind of look at it and and see how well the glue performed but at any rate using the manufacturers recommendations uh, King has a video on YouTube and that's what I'm going to try to follow here today. Before we get started, I want to make sure that everybody understands that this is not a tutorial on how to glue plastics or any other product together. I'm not here to tell you what to do. This is simply a demonstration on what I did for my project. So the products I'm going to need today are some acetone or some sort of cleaner to uh, clean the product after I sand it. And for that, I'm going to use this 120 grit sanding block. And uh, I've got a, a surface to work on here. I have my cloth to uh, clean the preparation area. Um, I have some C clamps, so some wood, woodworking clamps would probably be best. I'm going to use this uh, putty knife. So this is a 98 cent putty knife. Uh, Putty knives are, some, for some reason, are $10, $9 now. So I'm going to use this. Um, got my screwdriver to pry open my container of acetone. And I have my uh, propane torch here to um, prep the surface. So I have two sets that I'm going to glue together. So I'm going to inspect them because this product has imperfections. And so I'm going to look for bows, just like you might for a piece of lumber. I'm just kind of checking it over to see which two surfaces are going to uh, mate best. Once I have that established and I have everything oriented, then I'm going to go ahead and start sanding. One thing that I'm going to be aware of is my time because I can go ahead and sand these lightly. And then I can come in with my towel and clean the surface. But once I apply the flame, then the timer is going to start. And I'm going to want to get my adhesive on and clamp the product together within 30 minutes. So the sanding block is picking up some of that product. I'm going to kind of go over it just a little bit more. And I'm not using a lot of pressure. I'm just trying to just trying to scuff it up a little bit. And first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an area. I'm just going to clean. I'm going to dust these off here real quick. No point putting acetone on dust. Okay, so now I'm just going to uh, moisten the cloth just to get the last of the dust off, being careful not to spill the acetone, obviously.
and the acetone should evaporate relatively quickly. It's a volatile product and because it's volatile and flammable I'm gonna go ahead and close this off and then I'm gonna remove the the rag and place it uh, in a different area. This is where the timer starts because I'm gonna apply the flame and when I apply the flame I should see a shadowing effect and I don't want to melt the plastic. I just simply want to pass the flame over the product. And I'm actually going to orient these in a different way. So I don't see any smoke and I'm just looking for a small amount of fuel because I don't have an oxygen feed in here and I'm just looking for the color of the flame. So now that I, I can see some redder flames and then so I'm just going to quickly pass over. And apparently, if you goof this up, then it's just a matter of starting over. And starting over would include sanding. I've got a little bit of wind that I'm contending with, so I'm trying to stroke in a consistent fashion. That thin piece definitely arched. Okay, I'm gonna call that good. So I probably had a little too much heat on this thinner piece. So there is a test that you can do using water to see how successful the heat treatment was. And essentially what you wanna do is just make sure that it that the water doesn't bead over it and that the water creates a nice clean sheet over it so the next step is going to be to glue this and I mentioned as the the timer is on uh, another tool I'm going to need is something to cut the tips of the epoxy and of course you're going to need the epoxy and this is a special epoxy. I'll go ahead and I'll list uh, a couple products that are applicable. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work with this thicker piece and I'm just going to essentially apply equal parts here, which is easier said than done. With this stuff, always one comes out faster than the other. In a perfect world, I would be mixing the epoxy resin in, a, in one of those tubes, or I would be mixing it on a different surface and then transferring the epoxy to my project. So I'm just working the, uh, the epoxy from one edge to the next getting the different parts to work with the cat get, getting the catalyst to work with the the base or whatever that other parts called unsure what the work time is on this and I'm trying to get it thin I don't want I don't want it thick not paper maybe paper thin but just not not too thin all right that should be worked good enough and they don't talk about letting it tack up or anything. This is epoxy.
definitely not easy working against the white the white plastic here all right and it's not giving me any indicators as far as stiffening up so I'm I'm gonna guess this thing's gonna go off really quick all of a sudden that looks like it's about it so I'm gonna use the uh, I'm going to use the package to give me a, a test spot for later. Alright, there we go. I'm going to bond it together now. So let's... So I'll just kind of get a little fit on here and then I'm just going to try to, without gluing my fingers together, get it as close as I can. In my case I have a, a hole that's supposed to receive this uh, bolt so I just want to make sure that I can still get my fastener through there. That looks good. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to apply some pressure and as I do so I'm going to try to do it evenly and then check the uh, as I went down on that one it as I torqued down on that one it did get a little uh, excited it did move a little bit and actually And I can see the product is actually arching. So I'm going to... So that's actually walking on me. I might have put the product on a little thick. I can see it starting to ooze a little bit here. So I would say definitely uh, better clamps because this stuff's walking all over the place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scoot this closer to the end here. Actually, I'm going to create a strong back or a whaler. I think something like this is gonna fucking. Okay, I can smell the glue now. So I don't think I have much more time left. It's just moving on. These things are dancing all over the place. So fortunately in my case, I don't have... Tolerance isn't really a huge issue. So definitely these, these pieces were... They were moving all over the place. So I'm gonna try to hold it in in place let's see what the work time I think the work time was like 20 minutes I'm glad I brought a chair it's only been a couple minutes and I can tell that it's not uh, doesn't want to move as, as much now and then I have my test subject here so it's not yeah it's it's got a ways to go. So I don't think it's been quite 10 minutes. I think they say uh, handling working time is 15 to 30 minutes for this specific brand. 
of glue of epoxy and uh, so it, it doesn't really go off all of a sudden as I was anticipating and uh, but it's not it doesn't want to dance around as much so actually just holding it there for a few minutes I think is I think that did the job and I can look at my uh, my test pile here it's just tacky now I can definitely move it so if I really if I really wanted to I could fine-tune this but it's looking it looks like it looks like it's where I want it to be the takeaway here is that the product this product specifically with the work time of 15 to 30 minutes um, it kind of laid on pretty thick so that might be something to take into consideration if I was working with high tolerances I don't know I don't know if this is the product um, so I think there's definitely some uh, there's definitely some drawbacks and there's only going to be a, a maybe a few edge circumstances where this uh, this adhesive process would be applicable to any project so really when you're working with this product I would suggest making sure that you always have uh, mechanical fasteners that are at least carrying the majority of the load and I, and I have no idea about longevity no, I don't hear anybody making claims that this is a permanent uh, adhesive so alright well that's it for this video thanks guys